Video editing is such an interesting topic because as creators, I think we all try to avoid it at some point or put it off, put it on the back burner and wish there was quicker ways to do things. Over my many months of experimenting and trying different things, I have come up with some things that really helped me in my workflow of editing. And I wanted to share some of that with you guys. I really wish I knew this stuff before I started, not only creating YouTube videos, but drone videos in general. These are some of the things that I did, which hopefully will help you with your drone video productions. The first thing was, you don't have to watch every minute of your footage when you load it up onto your PC, straight out of the SD card. And hear me out with this. I used to come back and then I'd watch all the drone footage and I only found maybe 30% of it was actually usable footage. And I do have another tip which will change that percentage in your favor, which will help you a lot in your post-production process. But that's coming up in a little bit later in this video. But what I found was there was only like 30, 30, maybe 40% of the footage I could actually use in some form. And when you load up your drone footage, we're so enamored by the fact that our drones captured these awesome images. And a lot of the times, just the experience of re-watching flying your drone I could sit there and do it, no matter how jittery and jerky the image is, I could just sit there and watch it and have a cu cup of coffee in my hand, which I wish I had right now, actually. Um, but in, in actual fact, when, we, when it comes down to editing, what I needed to do was I needed to find the juiciest part of the footage that I'd captured so that I could progress along my post-production process. But I was too stuck on actually just re-watching everything, being the biggest fan of my own work. And I know, as creators, we can get stuck with that. And it's not a bad thing if you've got the time to do it, but if you're trying to build an efficient system that allows you to either edit in a short time frame or pump out a lot more videos in the time that you've got, then you really need to get past this point. And the quickest way I did this was simply using the scroll wheel on any editing software. Now I'm gonna demonstrate this on CapCut, which is also one of my favorite editing softwares. I also do use Final Cut Pro, which is, you know, my favorite editing software, but you know, it really does come down to your style and what you, you prefer and also budgets, right? But we won't get into that in this video. Let me know in the comments section what editing software you, you do use, by the way. I am interested to hear about that. So go ahead and first simply skim through your footage, find the usable parts, cut away everything else. And then that will get you started with just having some clips that are usable and it really shaves away a lot of the unnecessary trolling through looking for the actual clips that you're going to use later down the track. Now you might already do this, if you do, great. If you wanna avoid this altogether, what I like to do now as a part of my filming process is I will only film the clips that I wanna actually capture to use in my video. So for example, if you're going out and filming this beautiful point of interest or you might be going out and just simply taking your drone out for a flight. If you're trying to compile a bunch of clips at the end of it, the best thing to do is actually capture the shots that you want by setting the scene, make sure your image is framed correctly and then when you start to actually move your drone and put it in motion, that's when I like to hit record. And then when the drone completes the shot and generally hold that for 10 to 15 seconds because make sure you you actually do hold it for long enough because I found myself coming back home and, and not having enough footage to actually work with. There is unnecessary amounts of battery that you're gonna use. So I found that, you know, when I was filming originally, I would just film 20 minutes of video and I'd run through all my drone battery. Plus then when it gets to post-production, you're really trolling through 20 minutes worth of footage where you could have achieved the same thing with, you know, maybe 30 different clips, which are a lot easier to to work with and a lot easier to manage. Now to do that, you're obviously gonna have to be a little bit more planned out with what shots you're gonna take. And this is the third thing that I would like to make sure that you as a drone filmmaker understand. I've wasted a lot of time myself actually just turning up to my location and just spending heaps of time just figuring out what shots I'm gonna take, in what order, in what sequence, and in some cases not capturing the shots that I wanted at all. So what I would do is just write down a little bit of a run sheet of the different shots and angles, gimbal movements or drone shots that I'm gonna actually use. And you can even go down the path of sequencing them to make step number four of this process a lot easier. Post-production is all about cutting away the unnecessary, color grading, adding music and sound effects, and sequencing your video correctly. If you can accelerate that by simply just applying some basic fundamental filming 
practices and basics that you can build into a little bit of a system when you're out in your location, things become a lot easier in the post-production and editing process. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Getting close to 500 subscribers and that would be an awesome feat. I remember when I first started this channel, I didn't know who was gonna watch and listen to my videos, but I have a lot of fun creating for this community and would love for you to be a part of it if it's something that you enjoy watching. So go ahead, like, subscribe, and let's go to number four. The next thing is you don't have to shoot in S-Log. You can still create stunning video out of a normal color profile from the Mini 2 or Mini 3 Pro or whichever drone you're flying, that's DJI based. I can't really talk on any other drones, but my experiences with DJI drones is that the normal color profiles are very, very serviceable and in fact, they will still give you stunning footage. The, the more important thing you should be focusing on is setting up your drone in the right direction using sunlight to your advantage. And you may even find that the footage that you're capturing looks stunning and you've spent that little bit of time focusing on the shots that you're getting and a little bit less time worrying about how you're gonna color grade a piece of footage. Especially for someone that's just beginning, S-Log footage is, is amazing and it will give you a lot more bandwidth to work with. In fact, it does add a lot more time to your post-production. The other thing that really helped me was finding a piece of software that was simple and easy to use. This is the one thing that I think we can get carried away with is using a piece of software that someone else is using and then it's something that you either find too hard to use, the interface might be not made for you and or it's missing some really important features that you want to level up your drone video production. Now my suggestion would be to go and check out CapCut. CapCut is an awesome free video editing software that is available on your MacBook, on your mobile, or even on your PC. So go and check that out. By applying these five things, I guarantee you, you will speed up your post-production process. It's just about finding a system or a workflow that works for you. Don't go copying someone else you're just not gonna find something that is suitable for you. And this is what being creative is about. It's about going out, trying, failing, and figuring out what works best for you, and then applying that and repeating it as many times as you can. And I think it might be time for me to head out. I'll see you on the next one.